Dad said what well, we were going to make a film about a Sasquatch, well it's a sort of giant gorilla. But Sasquatches are good at hiding so we couldn't find one and needed someone to dress up as a Sasquatch so we could film them instead of finding a real Sasquatch which we couldn't. This set Granny off to thinking and she went and got a man called Jim who was big like what a Sasquatch is and we got him to dress up like a Sasquatch. Jim's costume weren't finished proper and were made out of a pink bathrobe and fluffy slippers and the head of a gorilla what Aunt Myrtle had made. He was trying the costume on for size when all the rumpus happened. Jim couldn't get the head off because Aunt Myrtle had tied it proper but she hadn't cut eye holes in it so Jim couldn't see nothing. But he heard the sirens and tried to get away but got tangled up in a bush in the yard what a spiky bush and he stayed there until he got quiet what took ages because there was hundreds of hell's angels on bikes which were all revved up and right loud and all the neighbours had come out to see and there was loads of police cars all parked up with their sirens going and lights flashing what was stupid because we could see where they was and there was police getting out of the cars and one of them was shouting through a trumpet thing but we couldn't hear him because of the racket. And then there was the police car what Granny had driven into the helicopter and Granny standing on the roof of the police car spinning and spitting and lashing her hook up and down. What a sign that she's just getting warmed up. Then there were some soldiers what came out of the helicopter all fitted and impressive like proper soldiers but they're getting back into the helicopter all battered and hurt because Ginger the cat was all charged up because he had been at Aunt Myrtle's special leaves and he moved like he was speeded up and bit the soldiers and scratched them and whopped them. And they don't look like proper soldiers because they don't have guns because what Mum and Dad and Uncle Ted and Grandad and Aunt Myrtle had took their guns off them. The driver of the helicopter started up and starts taking off. Mum shouted to Dad to take his eyes off Gladys who lives down the street what has come out to see what the rumpus is and the wind what the helicopter is making is blowing her dress up so you can see her legs. Just as the helicopter gets into the air Granny screeches and leaps for the helicopter and gets a hook into the tail. The helicopter is a bit smashed because Granny drove the police car into it and with Granny hanging on the back as well it was tricky for the driver to get it to fly proper and it just spun around and Granny started hiking herself up towards the door. Grandad yelled that Granny were going to take over the helicopter. The police were getting right leery and the Hells Angels started fighting each other because they wanted to talk to Gladys and the police went to help Gladys because they thought she were in danger but Gladys don't need no help from the police. The neighbours started fighting the police because they was helpful like that. Then everyone was fighting except Gladys who was having trouble arranging her dress and some police were on the radios and one of them was still shouting into a trumpet what we couldn't hear because of the noise of everything. And Granny had got into the door of the helicopter and it started spinning worse. Then another helicopter came what had BBC written underneath it. Mum shouted we was going to be on telly. But the helicopter wind had messed up her hair and she was going to go inside to get it proper. Then another helicopter comes what Grandad shouts is a police helicopter what is reinforcements. And the air is full of helicopters. And the one Granny is in is doing loops and flipping over and over and doing things what a helicopter don't normally do. What means Granny has taken over the helicopter. Granny spins the helicopter right low over our heads and leans out of the window shaking a hook. Then, after shoving two fingers down her throat and vomiting on the police, she spins away over the houses, knocking chimneys off on the way. It took ages and ages to tell the police what the guns weren't ours and what we had just picked them up from the soldiers. And we gave the guns to the police and told them we didn't know nothing about nothing. And all the police and all the Hells Angels and helicopters was nothing to do with us. And the police took the guns and showed the guns to the Hells Angels and the Hells Angels stopped fighting and went away. Then the police helicopter went away and all the police cars put their sirens off and then they went away except for a few of them and all what was left was some police cars and the helicopter with the BBC on it and all the neighbours had gone in because the rumpus was over except for Gladys who was on the street rearranging her dress because it had gotten blown around by the helicopter winds except she were rearranging it badly and the top bit were coming off a bit and it weren't covering her legs much either and dad were looking until mum stopped him looking by telling dad to get inside now and smarten himself up because we were going to be on telly. People came out of the BBC helicopter and they had cameras and cables and microphones and electrical things with switches and dials and it all plugged together. And they had lights as well and a big screen thing and a thing that went bup bup bup. What they said was a generator what makes electricity and they said what because of the helicopters and stuff they was going to interview us about it and we would be on telly. And I say I know all about it so they should interview me most but you say you know more than me and you saw it first so they should interview you and dad says he is the head of the family so they should interview him. Everybody laughs and mum says nobody knows nothing except her and she's going to be interviewed and she's going to be on telly and that's that. Then a woman brings a big box of lotions and powders and lipsticks and stuff what women put on their faces and she paints mum's face and fluffs her hair up and mum puts on her best dress and earrings and even dad was gobsmacked. Mum didn't look like mum, she were beautiful. It were like she were a picture in a magazine. A pretty woman who was dressed up proper and sounded right posh told mum she would be interviewed in the yard because the light was good and that's where the action happened. 
and there was a big camera and a man behind it and another man holding a big fluffy thing what Grandad said was a microphone and there was a big white umbrella thing what the thing was for reflecting the light onto mum so she would look good and there was another woman holding a bit of paper and a man with another bit of paper on a board and there was another man with another piece of paper and that was on a board as well and they all looked right stuck up and important even though they was only holding bits of paper and the pretty woman told mum what it was going to be a live broadcast and mum was going to be famous and mum looked famous already then someone shouted what we had to shut up because they was going to do the interview and everybody shuts up and the lights on the cameras went on and point at mum and the pretty woman is just about to say something but just then there was a rustling scratching sound and the bush what mum is standing beside sways backwards and forwards and Jim crawls out from under the bush where he was hiding and he's still wearing the gorilla head but what Jim had tried to get it off and turned it around so it were on backward and he still has the fluffy slippers on but that bush is right spiky and when he crawls out the spikes catch up the bathrobe he was wearing and pulls it off and he's not wearing nothing under it and then Jim stood up and that's why all the people watching the telly didn't see mum but they did see Jim and then they saw nothing because the pretty woman screamed and the man with the camera switched it off and somebody said something about a technical problem and what they were returning to the studio but just then there was a roaring sound like it were thunder but it weren't it was a jet plane and it were tearing around in circles and looping the loop and all flashing in the sun and it was great and then it bloom and stopped. I never seen nothing like it. It was stuck in the air. Grandad shouts what it's a jump jet, what is a special kind of jet, what can hover like a helicopter and it did it were incredible. Then it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up again like it were a yo-yo. Then it stands on its nose and starts spinning and then it comes right over us and the window opens and something sticks out of the window and it's a hook. Grandad shouts what is granny, she must have got a jet plane. Then the driver leans out and it is granny and that was just the start. Because Granny had been thinking and when Granny gets to thinking things can get right dodgy.